Hello and welcome to JSA TV and JSA podcast. We are the newsroom for tech, telecom, and data center professionals. I'm Keely Dorian, media relations manager here at JSA. And joining me today, we have Ian Golter from Kohler. Ian, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad to have you here. We're really glad to be chatting with you today. We're here to talk a little bit about backup power generators for data centers and how they're designed. But before we get into that, would you mind just giving us a little bit of background on yourself and what you do for Polar? Yeah, absolutely. So right now I'm in outside sales, uh, specializing in data centers. So work really on developing proposals and uh, responding to uh, inquiries for uh, for data center customers. And uh, so far to date, I've uh, been with Kohler four years and helped put in about 200 megawatts of, uh, of data center power. So a little bit of time in the field. That's incredible. I know you guys stay very, very busy and doing some really great work over there. So let's start with some of those general concepts. Like we said, we're here to talk about uh, backup power generators and d data center design. So from that design perspective, what are some of the pain points that Kohler is striving to solve for data centers? Yeah, so there are a couple of key requirements in the industry. Obviously, uh, reliability is, um, is key, right? You need to have your power online. Um, and then performance, you need to have your power be able to, to handle the what you ask of it, right? Um, and so um, reliability and performance are key in our, in our design philosophy. And uh, we approach those by really mitigating failure points um, with redundancy and then um, or eliminating failure points and then making the units so that you can monitor them. So if anything does go wrong, you can study that remotely and, uh, and address any problems that arise. So we've got a, a couple features that have made that possible, but we've really um, eliminated a couple key um, and critical uh, points of failure. So we've got redundancy in the starting system and the fuel system. And then we've really designed our units ground up to be monitored uh, remotely. So from a single ethernet connection, you can, um, you can monitor really the entire enclosure, the generator controller um, and how it's performing. Yeah, definitely a lot to think about there and a lot of working and moving parts all at once. So. I'm curious to know how does Kohler's design process work to keep all of these considerations in mind and keep everything working as it should all at once? Yeah, so our design process is very much customer driven. We take a lot of feedback, um, both from direct customers that we have ongoing experience with, case studies, um, as well as specs and standards that are available throughout the industry. And uh, and we'll collect that all when we're, when we're establishing a new product um, and we'll lay out the criteria for it. Um, and so really that, that leads us to design our product with reliability in mind, uh, really from the ground up. Um, and then also we have the benefits of a really well tenured engineering staff um, and an ISO 9001 organization. And so we've got um, good processes in place to, to vet um, that development and design. So really from the beginning of a product's life, it's, uh, it's reviewed um, with reliability and performance, those criteria in mind. So, and then the last thing I'd say is that we, we really try to, to exercise a, a strong level of control over our supply chain. Um, so while we're developing the product, um, we have supply in mind. And so we, we have some vertical integration where we'll produce um, engines, enclosures, alternators, or we'll, um, we'll work hard to, to source and integrate um, purchase parts, so. Very good. Now I know that testing is a very big part of Kohler's model all you know through and through. So how talk to me about how testing comes into play here and does the in-house design approach create an improved testing process? Yeah, so with any new product development, testing is an integral part of, of your quality control. Uh, and so um, as products are developed, they go through thousands of hours of testing just to verify that they can perform in harsh conditions and that they can meet their lifetime expectations. But uh, in addition to that, every production unit is tested. So it's not just during development, but every unit leaving the floor so that we have um, an ongoing quality control feedback loop. Um, so nothing's leaving the factory without having been tested. But uh, but in addition to um, testing during development, we also have um, in-house enclosure production um, and the capability to test that. So that allows us to put the units in a, uh, an environment that they would be in in the field and really test them um, in a complete enclosure assembly. Um, and then having that capability within our own facilities lets us have those engineering and quality feedback loops uh, communicate more clearly and more quickly. Yeah, it's absolutely such an important part of the process. And I know something that Kohler does extremely well. 
So next question for you here is data center backup generators are all tailored to meet certain specifications. So the question is, how does Kohler's in-house design approach or the approach that you take rather, how does that enable the ability to meet specific customer specifications? Right. So going back to our design philosophy uh, and, and how we take customer feedback, really, we, we gather a lot of industry standards um, and again, case study feedback into that design. Uh, and what that does is it leads us one to a very kind of a broadly compliant design. And so the base product is going to be, it's going to meet most of the specs that are out there. Um, and then it allows us to have a good platform for upgrading and, and modification. So when you get to accessories, uh, your enclosure, the sound level, um, the environment, the units in, um, and switchboards, other, other accessories, that's where the specs really differentiate themselves. And we've, We've prepared a unit and an enclosure that can uh, that can accept a wide variety of um, spec requirements. So it's easily upgraded, and uh, and we have what we call our engineered specials process that allows us to really seamlessly um, integrate the entire assembly uh, to meet those specs. Very good. Now, how about individual components? How does Kohler's process approach the sourcing of parts? That can be a challenge sometimes. Yeah, so supply chain, as everyone knows, has been a, a huge challenge uh, for the last several years. Um, and uh, and we're no stranger to, to managing that. And so really from, again, from the design of a product, um, supply chain is, is heavily considered and uh, factored into design. So when we can, we'll vertically integrate. That allows us to, to wholly own the process from, from production um, development to production out through sale and then lifetime management of it. Um, and then where that's not possible, we we'll bring vendors on, but we'll very closely tie them into our process. And so we'll get engineering involved and, and establish specs for our vendors to adhere to, and then we'll do quality review. So we, uh, we maintain a, a team of supplier quality engineers that, uh, that helps us control um, vendor quality. So throughout the, uh, the entire um, purchase component, purchase component or, uh, or supply chain process, it's all looked at through a lens of, of quality analysis and uh, performance. Yeah, very, very good. You've talked a lot as we've been talking here about the in-house design team. So I want to give you just a moment to boast a little bit and uh, say some good things about the team. So can you give me an example of a new innovation produced by Kohler's in-house design team? Yeah, so I'd have to say probably the E-Frame, that's our, our one of our in-house enclosure offerings, but recently, and we're in the process of releasing, uh, a new iteration of that enclosure that has um, tier four retrofit ready features. And so that allows us to, to field a product that um, is, is cost effective and doesn't need necessarily to meet tier four um, is the standard kind of tier two EPA tier two emissions throughout the industry. And then um, we all know that emissions requirements are getting stricter. If your site had requirements to retrofit for tier four, we've pre-engineered kind of a plug and play solution that allows you to um, to purchase that SCR system directly from um, its vendor. And uh, and we can assist with that. And then you can just crane it on, on site. Um, so really it, it just drops right on top of the existing unit for a, a, a quick and, and seamless, a cost-effective retrofit. Yeah, those are some really great examples. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for hanging out with us here for just a few minutes on JSA TV. Before we let you go, is there anything else that you want to leave our viewers with? Yeah, I would say tier four is um, probably that tier four compliance and emissions are, are not going anywhere. And they're very much on the, the forefront of our um, you know our design um, process and, and our thoughts. And so as we look to the future, design readiness is, is a big consideration for us. Um, and so, you know, those aren't going anywhere. And I think being prepared is a, is a good place to, um, a good opportunity to set up products for success, so. Yeah, we look forward to watching what you guys are doing. And of course, look forward to talking with you again soon here sometime. Uh, where can our viewers in the meantime go to learn more? Yeah, so uh, kohlerenergy.com, kohlerpower.com. Um, we've recently rebranded, but uh, that is where you can find all the information uh, about um, our product. And we have spec sheets and design information available um, at your fingertips. All right. Very good. Thank you, Ian, very much for joining us here on JSA TV. And thanks to our viewers as well. And as always, happy networking. Mm -hmm.